Howdy guys. All right, so in this video, I wanted to walk through um, how to import points from a JSON file. So um, I've shown a couple ways already um, on uh, YouTube and also on uh, the Patreon uh, site of how to export out your point clouds to a JSON file um, and, you know, make it, you know, specific or make it really generic. Um, but what I want to show now is how do we get all that data back in? So let's say I'm, I've been given a JSON file that describes a point cloud and it's got a bunch of attributes on it. How do we go and generically import um, all of the, all of that data from the JSON file? All right, so what I'm gonna do, I've already gone ahead and created a Houdini project here. Let me actually um, save this as import points uh, video here. All right, and what I'm gonna do is just get myself set up with a point cloud. So I'm gonna call this GeoNode export point cloud. And I'm going to dive inside and create a grid. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I just want to get some data to work with here. And I'm going to toggle off my normals there. And I'm going to drop down a scatter node. And this will give me some points to export. And I'm just going to leave it like that. No reason to go crazy. And then I want to add some attributes to this. Um, so let's go to attribute uh, randomize. And let's create a random P scale. So let's do P scale. We'll name it here, so P scale. And I'm going to use the custom ramp and just set my min and max. Min will be 0 0.5, max will be 1.5, like so. And then I'm going to do another one of those. I'm just going to grab it from my history there. And this one's going to be type, I think. And I'm just kind of setting this up just to show you how generic this can be. So I'm going to name this uh, type. And in this case, I want to set this to a custom discrete. All right, this allows me to give it a bunch of just values. And so I'm going to set this to a string value. And for these values, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a type. Let's say we're, you know, producing some sort of like foliage system or something like that. And I want to give all these points a specific type. So some are large trees, some are small trees, some are large rocks, and some are small rocks. All right, and then you can use these little sliders to say, you know, I want less, you know, large trees, maybe more small trees, less large rocks, more small rocks, so on and so forth. Cool, so that sets me up with some, uh, some values or some extra attributes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down uh, my generic um, JSON exporter here. Uh, again, that was in a previous video, so uh, if you need a little refresher, um, I highly recommend watching the video. And so for this to work, um, I've already gone ahead and just set up a folder on my uh, desktop here. So for this to work, you need to assign the directory you want it to go to, and then we want to give it a file name. So I'm just going to call this foliage points. And then these, this attributes multiparm here allows me to tell this exporter to look for the pscale and type attribute. This is, what's, this is what makes it generic. All right, so I want to do P scale because you could have any number of uh, attributes and all you got to do is just tell the exporter here which ones you want to export. So that way it's not, you know, hard coded or anything like that. All right, so with that done, I'm going to select my JSON exporter and hit uh, export points. And if we go to my desktop now and we go to my uh, point clouds folder, you can see I have this j foliage points JSON file. Looks great. So we have our type and our P scale. And so now what we want to do is we want to import all this back into um, Houdini, right? I want to recreate this point cloud with all those particular attributes on it. And so let's do that. I'm going to create another geometry node and I'm going to call this uh, import point cloud. There we go. And then inside of here, I'm going to create a subnet. This is going to become a, an HDA. We'll call this um, import points from JSON. There we go. And I want to turn it into an HDA. So I'm just going to right click on it, say create HDA. And I'm going to give it my namespace here. And we'll do 1.0. There we go. And then I just go and name these guys. And obviously you can name this whatever you want. There we go. And then I want to save it into my project directory. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Well, for now, I'll just keep it here in my job. I was going to send it to my global folder, but yeah, I'm just going to save it here. Hit accept. Perfect. And so all we really need for this is a file 
chooser. All right, so I'm just going to call this uh, JSON file for the name, the internal name. And then for the label, it'll just be JSON file, like so. Hit apply and accept. And this will allow me then to go and um, assign whichever JSON file I want. And so I'm going to hit that little file button there and go to my desktop and choose my foliage points there. There we go. Cool. All right, so the next thing, I'm going to actually do this one a little different. I'm going to utilize a Python node here. So we're going to utilize a Python node. I'm just going to put a null at the top. Not totally necessary, but I, I tend to just do that. And we don't really need to do that. We'll call this import points. All right. And so inside of this Python node, and the reason why I, I'm going to be using the Python node and not just embedded into the Python module into the HDA is because right off the bat, I get access to the geo um, portion of the, the node. So I can start adding points to it, right? All right, so we are going to need a couple things up here. So I want to import OS so I can work with the OS and uh, look for files and stuff like that. And then I also want to import JSON. That way I can uh, load up JSON data or write it out if I wanted to. Okay, so then below this guy, and honestly, you don't need to keep this here. This is just what um, Houdini puts in there by default. And we can put in our own. So we'll get uh, main nodes and geo. And then we're going to um, get our parent. So we want to get the parent node here. And the reason why I want to get the parent node is because I need to get access to this parameter right here that we created. All right. So we want to go and say parent is equal to uh, node.parent. So that basically means that we now have access to this particular node up here. And you can prove that by doing a print. We'll just say parent.name. And there you go. So I got import points from JSON. Cool. And so with that, well, now we can get the JSON path. So I'm going to do JSON path. And this is going to be equal to our parent.parm. And it was called JSON file. And we're going to say eval as a string. Just so we know it's actually a string. So let's see what that is. So I'm going to say print uh, JSON path. And look at that. We have our path. Cool. So the next, the next step in, in all this um, is to read the file. So um, read JSON file like so. And really, you know, to make this a little bit more robust, we should check. We should say if the length of our JSON path is greater than zero, then we're cool. And um, if os.path dot is file, I want to make sure it's an actual file. So we're going to say JSON path. I don't want to import anything that's not a file. If that's true, let's print, uh, we have a file. Well, look at that. We have a file. <laughs> let's get rid of this print up here. Cool. So that means it passed both these checks. So it just makes it a little bit safer, right? We don't want to try to read some empty um, file that maybe is a text file or a JSON file. Um, and so there we go. Now we have that. And so now I want to loop through each of the points. I'm going to say uh, loop through point data like so. So we're going to say for point in, um, and actually we need, before we do that, uh, we need to read it. Hold on one second. I've got ahead of myself here. So if we have a file, let's get the data. So we'll say get data. So I'm going to say, I'm going to initialize a new dictionary. It's going to be equal to a new dictionary like so. All right. And then we're going to say with open, and we're going to send in that JSON path as F. All right. So we're going to store the results into that an F variable here. We're going to say that data is equal to JSON.load from F. So that will actually put all of the information that's in our JSON file, all this stuff, into this dictionary here that we can read through. So now um, we can say... So actually, now we could do a check. Let's do a check. We'll do if length um, of data is greater than zero. That means we actually have data. So now we can do for each point or for point in points or in data, sorry, points. There we go. So I'm going to access that guy out of the dictionary. Let's print uh, point and just see what we get. There we go. So now we've got all of the data pulled off of the or pulled out of the JSON file. All right, so we have our type, we have our ID, we have our P scale and our position. Awesome. 
So with that, um, the first thing we could do right off the bat is actually create each point. Um, and I highly recommend just doing that. Um, the generic exporter that I created over here um, basically defaults to just exporting the position and just the ID of the point. And honestly, you don't really need the ID because Houdini is going to assign the ID anyways. But um, the one thing we can do right off the bat here with this is get the position. And so I'm going to declare a new variable called pause. And we're going to say um, it's equal to the point and pause variable. All right, so this guy right here, it's going to be equal to that, that list. Very cool. And then once we have that, we can say that um, we need a, we actually need to format it into a vector. So position is going to be equal to who dot vector three. And I'm going to put in, I'm going to make sure I cast these to floats because they're all going to come in as a string, right? All right, so we need to do a cast here. And we're going to say pause uh, zero for the X position. And then let's go over here and do pause one for the Y and pause two for the Z. So that gives us our actual point value or our position for each point. And so we could kick this off by creating a new variable called new point and we'll say geo dot uh, create point like so. And then with that new point created, we can set its position. We can say set position and set it with that position variable. And there you go. So we got our point cloud back. So that's super cool. Um, now what we need to do is we need to basically roll through all of the data and pull off things like type and our P scale. And I don't want to hard code it. I don't want to have to specifically look for, you know, type the variable name type or the variable name or attribute name P scale, right? And so um, we need to actually do that in a little bit more of a generic way. All right, so let's do that. All right, so um, the way that I'm, I'm going to do this, um, it's pretty cool. You can actually um, have two values for your for your for loops. So in this case, I'm going to say name and then value in our uh, point dot items like so. Okay. This basically will give us both of those values. So I can say print uh, name plus semicolon there plus um, let's just do str uh, value. So we're casting it to a string. And there you go. So you can see that uh, we have pause and ID. So basically in your for loops, you can have two of these values and then basically iterate through uh, a dictionary element. Makes it much easier, less code. Uh, I like it a lot. So. So one thing that we're going to have to do is I don't want to have to set up these attributes, ID or pause, because those are just inferred and we've already taken care of pause. So I, I just want to skip those guys. So I need another if check in here. So I'm going to say if um, the name does not equal uh, pause and the name does not equal ID. So name does not equal ID. We're going to skip those. So remember um, the generic exporter, always puts in pause and ID. So I can, I know that I can just skip those guys because those ones are already set up by um, this code. And then Houdini also already goes and adds an ID to them by default. So we don't need to do that. All right. So uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, we don't already have an attribute of that name. So I'm going to do check uh, for attribute exists like so. And to do that, we're going to say attrib is equal to uh, geo dot find attrib value like so. And we're just going to pass in the name. All right. And so with that, we now are looking to see if an attribute are, with that same name already exists. And if it doesn't, then we should go and create it. So we're going to say if attrib uh, is equal to none. All right. Then let's go and create it. But we also have to make sure that we check the type. Right, because we're going to have to go and set the attribute type when we go and create it. So in this case, I'm just going to do two of them and you guys can add the rest later. But um, the way that we do this is we say if uh, type of value is equal to uh, list, like so, then we're going to say attrib is equal to geo.add attrib, like so. And then the type in this case is going to be um, uh, point. So we want to attribute type of point. So dot point like, so the name is going to be name and the value is just going to be the value that we currently have. All right. 
And then for the all strings, so if, you, if we come across a type of string, right? So this one works for lists, um, which our, our P scale currently is. But if our value is equal to, in this case, it'll be Unicode, right? That means it's a string. Then we want to also add that same thing, right? So there we go. And you probably just run that through. I, I prefer to actually check to make sure because I might, you know, set certain things uh, specifically for different attribute types. But that's a quick way to go and make sure that you are um, specifically setting the right type. All right, cool. So with that done, we'll, we should do one more check. We should say if attrib uh, does not equal none, then we can go and set it. We can, we can say that new point dot um, set attrib value. There you go. And we're going to say attrib and value. There we go. And it looks like we are getting an error. Must be some syntax error up here. Find attrib value. Let's see what's going on with that guy. Oh, sorry. It's find point attrib. Sorry about that. Find point attrib. And let's see what else we got. Add attrib. We need an R in there. Moving too fast. There we go. And with that, we just have created a generic um, point cloud or JSON point cloud importer, right? There's lots of ways you could do this, but that is the code to go and set up a generic importer for your point clouds. All right, so now we've covered a generic exporter. Now we have a generic uh, importer. So last thing always to do with your HTA is go and save it. And there you go. So anyways, that's what I wanted to show you guys in this particular video. Hope you liked it. Thanks so much.